Hi everyone. How are you? Hope you're fine. So, um, what an issue today. Issue. The topic for today is um, feminine and masculine. This is a very, very heavy um, concept for today uh, because, uh, because of course, uh, it's, um, it's something that moves us all today in the civilization. So what we are going to try to do is to, to try to understand uh, basically um, the concept of what means um, feminine and what means masculine. So the, the importance that I, uh, I think that is really important to understand the origin of the words as always, the etymology, because, um, because the origin of these words, even if we today in our current times, um, we, we talk about uh, we say some words very differently and we we express them with new concepts from our point of view of, of our times the words that we are using they are from the past and they had an origin so they have a charge on them they have a weight on them so um so also a lot of things that we have created as cult in our lives they had an origin, so it, that's why it's so important to understand them. The first thing to understand is that feminine and masculine are two concepts that we usually relate with um, the energy of a person. This person is feminine, this person is masculine. But um, what really happened is that the origin of these words are not about uh, how they are or how they move or how they feel they are speaking precisely about female and male they are talking about the sex the biological sex because feminine mean from the word femina that means female like the animals like the separation of the biology effect and in the other hand, masculine comes from the word masculinus, that means precisely the genitals of the of the man. So uh, this is the first concept that we have to understand that we usually talk about feminine and masculine if they are energetical aspects of the soul when they are talking about your genitals. For example, uh, this is not mistakes but uh, misinterpretations from how we use the feminine because for example um, uh, they would say this, this person is feminine when that person uh, behaves like a woman so through history through the culture we started to relate acting like a woman to have feminine energy so now we call feminine energy to that aspect. But uh, what really they were trying to say is that you are a woman, you look like a woman, okay? So the other concept to understand is woman and man, okay? Woman and man, two different concepts that we have to understand too. So, um, first of all, let's try to understand the origin of man. Uh, man is a word that comes from the Indo-European language. That means, um, that means the one that knows. But man is also a part of another word that is related with the earth, which is human. Okay, human comes from humus. Humus means earth, so that's where the word uh, hum human, humanus, human, came from, okay? So the people from earth, so the people from earth is, um, is 
human, so the one that comes from the planet, from, from this Earth, as we call the people from Mars Martians, we call the people from Earth humans, which is basically in Latin. Hmm? And from the word um, from the word um, humus comes hominus, and hominus means uh, means man. Uh, comes from the Latin, okay? But in English, they took only the sentence man. So, as I said, um, um, man comes from the Indo-European, that means to think, okay? So the people, um, uh, so the people thinks and came from the earth is called human. Man. Man also uh, is related with virility okay because um in 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 english you don't have this word uh, that is baron which is also male um, for a person but um there is the the virile uh, do, do you say that yes do you say this word in english yeah virile virile okay so um this is the origin word also related to man and is in, in the European language and it means uh, strong, okay, powerful, strong. So this is also related, the reality is related with uh, the concept of man. If the masculine aspect is the one that we call the reality, male, yes? So is the strong one. So in the opposite, the woman would be precisely the opposite of it. So in English is very different, but in Latin languages, woman you may say mujer, and it comes from mulieris, that means soft, something that that is weak. So if the man are strong, the women are weak. So the word woman in Spanish means exactly that, means exactly weak. It's terrible. But in English, it's also a little bit terrible <laughs> because woman comes from with man. With man. With is the origin of the word wife. And wife means also the concept of belonging. So a woman that belongs to. So saying woman is like saying the one that belongs to the man. Incredible. So from the very beginning, you may say, you may see that uh, from um, the very origin of the words, we are in that the feminine aspect is the weak and the masculine aspect is the strong one. In order to understand why these concepts are so heavy for us today, we should not think about them. Our perception from the 21st century, we have to go to the very origin where everything has started and how it was there, why they call it like this. So what we have to understand is that it's not the word that determines the reality, it's the reality that determines the word. Let's go to the very beginning. Just try to picture his like as what we were at the beginning, just animals. Okay? So think about uh, um, animals. All the things that an animal needs to do is to survive. So eat, sleep, reproduce. That's the three things that they are thinking all the time. Humans were doing exactly the same. In order to survive, to survive in history, they needed to have a lot of kids. And a woman to have kids, they need nine months. They understood that through all nine months, the woman should be protected because it was weak against 
the enemies again the the carnivores that they are that they were around so the masculine the male had to protect the women by working hunting and bringing the food home so the women could have kids okay and cook and so on so that's how they help themselves to survive let's remember that we are talking about the past okay but also we have to understand this that usually we think that weakness is something bad we have this idea today i don't know because of cap capitalism or whatever that to be weak is something wrong but for example why does all these bones the ribs the the sternum the brain they are so hard what are they protecting they're protecting the heart and the brain because they are the most soft parts they're so weak so soft that the rest needs to protect them because without the soft parts the weak part we die we don't exist so what we had to do is to protect the ones that ensure our survival this is why this is why in history in the past women were like the heart and the brain because women were those allowing the procreation allowing the kids to grow up they were the only ones able to cook to give the meal to give birth okay so they were so important that they were considered weak so what happened is basically the next we started to believe that the women were the weak part and the men were the stronger part so we have to put the stronger ones on taking care the weak ones what the men culturally start to think is okay if i have to do the job if i have to to work if i have to hunt if i have to protect if i have to do everything so i consider the weakness something that belongs to me so the men took power over the women okay that's natural okay that's natural that that someday happen this was happening in cult through uh, centuries and millenniums all the time so the thing is that through years and the process of history what people started to think is that women uh, were once ensuring the survival of the species so they create the whole cultures around this idea that women only have to have kids because it's the only way we can survive okay this is the great task of uh, an empowering empowerment of the feminine of the women okay so that's what the culture created hmm? but this is all because of context so let's go and think about the past try to think as the past i know it's very difficult for the people to think about this now with the mind of today but let's go to the past and think like and makes the exercise to think like if we were living in the past it was the this idea of women taking care of kids at home and men going to hunt and protect was not something imposed by the men over the women it was a convention between both of them to survive it was something useful for both of them to ensure the civilization so women took their own power power of women in that time was the womb so they say my power is the womb and the womb creator so my power is to create kids my power is to bring life to humans my power is to take all things that you, that 
the man has harvest and the man has hunt and create alchemy, which is the sacred food. So the power of the women was to give birth to humans, take care of the growth of humans and to feed humanity. And that's the biggest empowerment that a man can have. So that's why women were saying, this is my power. This is why in the past there were so many matriarchal civilizations. Not because women took power over the men, but because they recognized and they said, my womb is my power. So I am the human creator. This is how it was. So there were some moments in history when there was equality between men and women. And when was that? When there was no need to survive. When there was plenty humans, there was a lot of humans, there was a big civilization. So usually the men and women were more quiet, so they were able to study, to read, to learn from, which, from each other, to do many things um, common. So that created a balance. So basically, if all this is the history of humanity, this tiny moment is the equilibrium that we had. And time was spread all over the line. So there was no much time of balance. It was naturally chaos, misunderstandings, um, war, conflict. So survival. Because there were so tiny little moments of balance in history. Through all the millenniums, the idea that women must stay home, take care of kids, and men have to go out to protect was more common. Because it was much more time during um, this process of conflict, okay, of survival. It's been around 80 years and also 50 years, if you may say, um, that we started to come back to a balance again, that a lot of people in the world now doesn't need to survive, that we don't need to survive. We work, we do stuff, but there's no need to survive in a big part of humanity. So this creates another moment of balance in between men and women. There is much more opportunities of work, to, so that's why women sh doesn't have to take care of the kids. They have they can work, on um, men can also stay home and take care of the kids. There is no separation, okay. So basically, um, what, what happened is that even if we are trying to balance it now, again, um, we have been thousands of years with the conflicts of wars and fights trying to survive. So this is why it's very difficult to see the balance because we have been used to let the men out and hunt or work and the women stay and take care of the kids to ensure the survival. It was because of the context. So basically what happened? That what they call the male movement and the feminine movement they are uh, not by themselves a power, but they were a result of the context. Basically, the conflict that we have today is not about women against men and men against women. The conflict is the context. The fight that we are doing against feminine and masculine men and women is mistaken because the real 
fight, which is not a fight, it's a responsibility that we have, is to change the context. We have to take care of the context. We have to be aware of the context and be responsible of the context. Because in, an, in a balanced context, there is no need for anyone to fight for anything. There is no need for anyone to take care of the survival. There is no need to fight for life. So everyone is equal. Everyone is equal. So as we keep fighting against other gender, as we keep fighting against the other sex, this fight will turn out because it's absurd. Because the only thing that we have to do is to take care of the context. So the context is a mess around because we are wasting our time on a stupid fight. One of the other conflicts that we have today is diversity. We used to say diversity is something that empowers humanity, and it is, because humans are diverse, and we must acknowledge that the empowerment of each one of ourselves is something that made us be uh, unique. So we are all diverse by name, of course, and I do respect every movement because every movement that we are having of diversity is about being in your center and to saying this is what I am. But what we are doing now is not saying this is what I am. What we are doing is I am part of this group, this is another group, this is another group, and we are all diverse, but they are in different groups. So they separate, we separate more than we are really accepting the diversity. The thing is that we had feminine and masculine, and now we have like so many different groups in, in, in feminine and masculine, all separated. And we are not one. What we are trying to do with to balance this is to understand that all this diversity is good, is perfect, but we should not separate it like different things. We have to acknowledge this as the different potentialities that we are all that we all are, which is human. We all are human. It doesn't matter what you are. You are human. And human is the, uh, is the being that has the potentiality to be whatever, whatever you can be. It doesn't matter your sexuality. It doesn't matter whatever. You can become whatever you want. But with our being human, when you realize that you are human, so diversity is the ability to recognize the power of humans to become all they want because they are free to be whatever they want. There is the real potentiality of humans to understand that any human can become, can be whatever they want, the potentiality is there not to divide ourselves in different groups. When I say the conflict is in the other one, I start to create duality. I'm going to speak more because it's, um, it's a very tough uh, thing. So we have three levels. We can also understand this through the biological, the emotional and the mind. So, biologically, I am determined, I am limited. I am a man, I am masculine, so I cannot be a flower, I cannot be anything else, I cannot be a woman, because I am. That's it. 
in the emotional level is different because I have within, within in my blood, in my, sorry, in my body, I have the information of women and men because I am both in essence. So by energy, all the movement of my information from inside can make me feel women and men at the same time. Can feel more women or more men. I could say this by experience. My body um, is a man, but until I was 22 years old, my soul was a, a woman. I felt myself as a woman. I can accept that I was a man. For me, I was a woman. My soul was a woman. So through time, through the years, I found a balance between my inner woman and my inner man. And I found kind of a balance that which with which I am very happy today. And there you have the third level, which is the mind. And the mind can have any limit. So if in the mind you say, I want to be a flower, then you will be able to awake the potential of a flower and to receive the information of a flower. Maybe you want to be a dog. Maybe you want to be a tree. Maybe you want to be the earth. You will be downloaded information of those things in you because the mind doesn't have any limit. It is everything. So here you can check this thing that it's not one thing or the other. It's depending on which level are you talking to. So feminine and masculine is not opposite things. They are not two different things. They are two different energies from one same body. So what you within, you have both of them. So sometimes you activate the potential of one of them. Sometimes you activate the potential of the other one. You are both. So what you have to do is to just accept what you are and express that. The soul and the spirit doesn't have sex because sex is the origin of the word sex is sexual, it's, uh, sorry, it's um, reproductive organs. So only the body has reproductive organs, not the soul, the, the spirit. This means that um, when we say bisexual, homosexual, or, um, or any blah, blah, blah sexual, what we are just trying to do is to see that that person uh, is not a person, is someone defined by their genitals. You are defining people's genitals. That's what you are doing. So this is why, besides all this, there is only one truth, that we are all from Earth. So that's why we are all human. Basically, the most important thing to understand about this is that we should not fight against the other gender. Because to lose ourselves in the fight of gender makes it outside the focus that the problem is the context in a very balanced context there is no need for this fight there is no need for differences just thing i want to say about this is that i know there is is very com um, conflictive this thing for many women and uh, all the people that were in this fight of um, 
of taking back the power, like homosexual and sexual, um, that are fighting this, this kind of fight to take the power back. What I want to say is that nobody has taken the power, that the power can be only lost, but not taken. Each one, each individual has its own power. So by fighting others, you are not going to take the power back because nobody has that power, only you within. So take the power back to center yourself and to be strong by yourself. Like that, nobody else can take that power back, can take that power from you. Remember that the fight against men and women is not something that will take us to a good place because it's just history semantics. What we have to do now is to think about the context we are building for the future because if we, if we keep fighting each other, that's a lost war both sides and also for those who are fighting for diversity remember that diversity is something natural in humans so we should not fight for it. we just have to be diverse and not create groups to fight about it so remember that at the end of all things we are human. So I know that this touch a lot of, touches a lot of people from very deep um, because there is a lot of people that follows this this path that they are right now in this fight. And to talk about this, it's like taking the strength for this fight. But um, it's not that. Uh, we are here working for the consciousness. So in order to be aware of things, we have to understand that um, we shouldn't fight because fight is the old way. So uh, you can work to co coherence and consciousness to all this without the need to fight anyone. So... So let's go to the alignment. The vibration for today is two. The statement for today is I am of all emotion. The code for today is quartet. It says, every living being in its existence has to go through a process of four universal foundations of time, expression, experimentation, integration, and transcendence. Every being first expressed expresses itself, is born, and creates, then experiments. This means grows, plays with the created. When the game ends, integrates, produces, contemplates its creation, and analyzes what was lived. To end up transcending, dying, freeing the play, inheriting, inheriting it to the successors, of the cycle. All that makes it express itself again on another level overcoming itself. Sit comfortable. So we start to stretch the body, yawn, massage the body. And I start to relax me, letting all my mind fall down. I focus on my breathing.
as I breathe, I feel the air inside my body, transforming every organ into wind, making me feel soft and light as a feather. Perceive the air around me becoming wind and connecting with the wind within me. perceive the energy of my soul starting to move in circles inside my body with different colors as it goes through my skin spinning around faster as a twister with a rainbow color I perceive the sun, the I am, above me. So I put my hands facing the sky at the high of the heart to feel the heat of the sun. through my crown, the third eye, throat, heart, plexus, and anchoring in the sacrum with a beautiful orange. I perceive the light the energy of the sacrum expanding into rays of light, filling up my hands with a beautiful energy, with a color orange. This energy is the potential of the creator that I am. is the emotions of my soul that creates my creations. In one hand, I find my feminine energy and in the other one, I find my masculine energy. My feminine energy is the one that allows me to generate realities. And my masculine energy is the one that helps me to transcend realities. Both of them are inevitable parts of my being. Within me lies the information that makes every woman and every man. These two energies are the ones creating my South Pole and my North Pole. And in the middle 
I find I find the axis. What I am. The earth. Human. So I take both of them to the core so they can find in the middle the balance. I take my hands to my heart. So I take these two energies and made one out of them. My feminine and masculine, the woman and the man that lives in me, both together creates the one, the human. So I sing my vibration to unite them. flux of all emotions. I am the flux of all emotion. I am the flux of all emotions. Take a deep breath. So I begin to bring all this consciousness through my body by caressing, massaging, stretching and yawning. back here and now opening my eyes. So integrating one of the most difficult dualities of our time. So as always, drink a lot of water, rest a lot, and 
see you tomorrow at the same time for the route. Bye.